For the 2019-20 academic year, the Associate Deans for Education and QES have developed new grade descriptors in consultation with students and academic staff. There are two key improvements to these grade descriptors. The first is that they are more simplified and streamlined with fewer categories. The second is that the new grade descriptors are now level specific with versions created from level three for foundation year students through to level seven. The effectiveness of grade descriptors depends not so much on how they are written, but how they are used in practice. Where grade descriptors are generic enough to be used across programmes, it means that their use in practice requires them to be discussed and enacted within disciplinary contexts. The language used within the grade descriptors needs to be applied specifically to the task or the discipline where they're being used and ensuring that staff and students understand this. The second involves working with students to understand the criteria and the descriptors and to know what good quality work looks like. The third is that marking and programme teams need to discuss the new grade descriptors, ensure they have a shared understanding of what they mean so that they are applying them consistently when grading student work. The Code of Practice for Assessment and Feedback recommends that generic grade descriptors are translated into task-specific rubrics or marking schemes. Here we see an example from the new generic grade descriptors representing one grade boundary. Now in these types of generic grade descriptors, we typically see evaluative language, terms like very good, that are used to give an indication of the quality of work within that particular grade boundary. However, description is needed because our own judgments of what very good looks like is often implicit and we need to share with students and colleagues our own understandings so that we all understand what quality looks like and how to get there. This is important in the context of the discipline and a specific task. The development of evaluative judgment is an important graduate skill, representing students' capacity to make decisions and recognise quality in the work of themselves and others. Evaluative judgment supports learning through assessment and students' engagement and use of feedback. Embedding opportunities within programmes for students to practice making evaluative judgments enables them to play a stronger role within assessment. This could involve discussing the grade descriptors with students and rubrics or mark schemes. Crucially, grade descriptors should not just be placed on the VLE or included in a handbook, but there should be some opportunity to discuss and make sense of the criteria within the context of a particular unit of assessment. Students should be able to describe the criteria in their own words and apply them to the task they're working on. Students can also benefit from opportunities to hone their judgments by applying grade descriptors to assess their own work or their work of the peers. They could, for example, look at a paragraph of a work in a peer's draft, apply the grade descriptors and provide some comments. Finally, we can develop students' evaluative judgment through the analysis of exemplars. This could involve providing examples of varying quality for students to discuss, or it can even provide different sections of the same assignment for students to compare and contrast to get different ideas of quality at varying levels of the grade descriptors. Now, a common concern with these types of activities is that they represent spoon feeding, telling students what they need to produce at each level. What evaluative judgment is doing is actually helping students to take the perspective of a marker rather than telling them exactly what they need to do. This develops students' self-regulation, which improves their capacity to generate feedback from themselves, not being so reliant on others to provide it for them. No matter how clear a set of grade descriptors, individual markers bring their own approaches to interpretation of the criteria, and markers often apply tacit judgments when marking work. And this can result in discrepant approaches to marking, which can require lengthy moderation procedures in order to ensure consistency and parity of judgment. Calibration workshops are based on the principles of pre-marking calibration, not post-marking moderation. This approach is best represented as an academic conversation between members of a programme team to discuss the approaches they take to marking work and to surface the perhaps contradictory tacit criteria used by different members of a marking team. 
Calibration workshops can be run at the start of the academic year for all programme staff or can be run with smaller marking teams prior to the submission of student work. The main activity is the discussion of marks awarded to separate pieces of work, but there are also uh, useful discussion questions that can be used to open a workshop, to surface tacit criteria and to agree common principles for marking. A useful discussion question to open is to consider the difference between level descriptors, grade descriptors, learning outcomes and marking schemes. The second is to encourage a marking team to articulate the difference between the key evaluative terms in the grade descriptors like sound, good, excellent, outstanding and adequate. In the calibration activity, a workshop facilitator such as a DLT or programme leader selects three pieces of example work for discussion amongst the team. These should be anonymised prior to circulation and gain student permission for using them for this purpose. The three pieces of work could be chosen to represent a spread of marks or could include those that may be harder to mark, for example borderline submissions. It's recommended that at least one piece of work is a borderline submission or one that is expected to elicit divided opinion as these cases are often the most useful in forcing the articulation of personal marking models. Members of the marking team individually assign a mark to each piece of work. This can be carried out prior to the workshop itself. In the workshop, each individual writes the grade they have assigned to each piece of work on a single post-it note, sticking it on the wall in a place designated for each individual piece of work. An individual should be prepared to discuss the reasoning behind their chosen mark. The facilitator then opens up a discussion about the spread of marks awarded. Taking each of the individual pieces of work in turn, the facilitator can lead a discussion of the features of the work that influence marking decisions and why individuals assign particular grades to the work. Emerging themes and areas of misalignment between markers can be written on a board or flip chart during the discussion. The group should be tasked to identify assumptions that have been made about the work and or the criteria, the differences and beliefs held about the different levels in criteria, ways in which the criteria have been interpreted in different ways by different markers. To find out more about evaluative judgments, calibration and the development of rubrics and criteria, here are some suggested resources. And if you would like to find out more about these uh, topics or if you would like support in running calibration workshops, please contact the Department of Higher Education.